So uh, we made a paper uh, about uh, testing and research, um, and we put it on the internet. And so this is actually on the internet. From this site, you can click to see the actual content of the paper, <coughs> uh, which has been rendered with the code examples, and also see uh, the, uh, the paper that's been created. Um, I'm going to give a few extracts from the paper now in this presentation just to talk about some interesting things that we've, we've talked about. So one area that I'd like, here is an image you've had to look up from the bottom of the back explaining the making paper. Um, so one of the things that's interesting in testing for research is because there's a lot of numbers around, uh, you don't need to visualize what's going on with the data in order to, in order to see the case. And as soon as you start visualization, uh, the more effective it is to see whether your code is doing what you expect. So this visualization-based testing is actually much more important for, for, for research stuff. So do start testing early. So you know, one example here is I've made a, a, an extended example for this using NumPy to do Conway's Game of Life. And you know, the way you tell that code is correct is through uh, the animation of the Conway Game of Life happening. Um, and by doing that, you can see if anything goes on. You know, we can see if our periodic boundary conditions are correct. So while yes, we do want our automated testing of code that, that produces uh, test with numbers, um, this kind of visualization-based testing will give you a massive heads up on, on, on extra fast seeing things are wrong. And do this automatically, and then look at, and look at eyeball the video every time you run um, code. Another thing from the Game of Life example is sometimes it's really hard to, to tell what's the answer supposed to be because the answer is quite complicated. But what we can test here is the conservation law and the fact that LIDAR's always got five life, life cells. So here, this generator yields the long series of numbers of the current set of active cells, and we're testing in this unit test on the conservation law. And that's an interesting thing that is a useful testing approach for scientific codes, not so much for, uh, for other kinds of things. And then finally, the last example I want to show from the uh, Game of Life example, ten, in 10 seconds, is that when you're making parallelism, you can uh, instantiate multiple classes to represent your different computers, and so you test your parallel code without having to have MPI. So each computer is a different entity, effectively a different class instance. There's no MPI, you got to stop it. Yeah? And there's the video of it passing through the edge. Go. <laughs> All right, okay. So one thing we didn't expect, and then we did one better, was the amount of effort required to serve all of these formats. So as you saw, it's very cool that you can like interact with the paper and you can make the simulations and look at them and fill in the premises as well. So we wanted people to be able to download the notebook and just you know go to out whichever way they wanted to. And then we wanted to serve up a PDF version that we could distribute and also a website. So always the you know the most recent version is always available online. And that ended up taking a lot of effort, so we decided to put a sort of extra section of the paper of how we actually generated uh, the paper. And so it's all done through continuous uh, integration, through continuous development. So we use Travis, and what that does is it grabs all of the notebooks in the repository automatically. You can add the new ones that will find them, and it's all over source, so they don't make a poor request and add a chapter or edit a chapter or make them more useful, that's fine. Uh, and so it finds those and it converts them to the raw data and then the PDF and then also uh, into the HTML and that's all done with MB Convert. And then we use uh, Jeffrey templates and various things um, to then just serve it straight to the GitHub pages. Um, and so this isn't fully fleshed out yet, but there'll be all sorts of things of you know how to should structure a repository, how are you going to manage how people make pull requests and how they add the content and then how do you serve it. So uh, Travis automatically for us when you make a, a change, it pulls all those changes recompiles the HTML and then pushes all of that to a separate branch on their GitHub pages. So that's kind of isolated and, uh, and another sort of thing. I have to admit that this took a lot more effort than we expected, I think, when we started doing it. Uh, but I think now, now it's there, we've learned a lot about the tools and we really want to pass on that information because I don't know about the other tool, but it's been such a good experience like, working on this. And it's actually, now that everything's in place, yeah. it's going to be really easy to take forward and yeah, anyone can contribute. So, yeah. so, our testing paper about testing tests itself and then deploys itself in the way we look at it. And James is about to say, Well, we've actually got so far down the track of writing paper, we've actually submitted the abstract to a conference. The paper itself is due on the 10th of May, which I'm going to make on the week of May. And the conference itself is in Transylvania on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, maybe that's how we got. Oh, sorry, we could quickly say, so everyone came to the demo yesterday, we started looking into 
how we might be able to deal with documentation validation. That's something that's not in there yet, but that's something we want to add. So it'll kind of before it. So at the moment, it already re-executes all the notebooks before committing. So if you make an error in that notebook, it's not going to upload that to the website. So there is already some error checking to make sure someone doesn't make a pull request and then break everything. So that's horrible. In five seconds, this demo is showing the handoff of that glider through the Halo swap between the two classes. 